Honourable Member for Davenport. Uh, thank you so much, Mr. Speaker. It's an absolute honour for me to participate in today's debate on behalf of the residents of my riding of Davenport. Today's Opposition Day motion calls on our federal government to introduce new supports in the upcoming budget to help workers, families, small businesses who are struggling uh, the most in this economic downturn, and in particular uh, for those uh, that are in industries that are most highly impacted, like the arts and culture sector, hospitality, aviation, and also to take some additional measures in order to prevent bankruptcies and layoffs as much as possible. As we know, Mr. Speaker, COVID-19 has had wide-ranging impacts in Canada and it's cost lives and jobs and the financial security for millions. This winter, we know, has been particularly uh, tough on many business owners and their employees across the country. But Canadian businesses have shown tremendous resilience in adapting to these challenges, adjusting their operations to uh, keeping Canadians safe, pivoting to new business models and scaling down their costs during times of weaker demand. And I have seen that resilience right across my own riding of Davenport. Mr. Speaker, at the beginning of the pandemic, our government moved quickly and urgently to introduce comprehensive supports for Canadian workers and businesses impacted by COVID-19. As the pandemic has evolved, the government has monitored the conditions of the economy closely, and we've listened to feedback. And we made sure to continuously bring forward more help and adjust our programs to address the, the issues that our, our businesses and our, and our constituents have raised. So let me just run through some of these supports. Um, so, Mr. Speaker, shortly after the pandemic started, the government introduced the Canada Emergency Commercial Rent Assistance, known as CICRA, for small businesses in partnership with the, uh, with the provinces and territories. This initiative was to lower rent by 75% for small businesses that have been impacted by COVID-19. In the end, all told, CICRA provided over $2 billion, uh, to, $2 billion to more than 140,000 Canadian businesses across the country to help with their rent payments, and, and it represented the supporting over 1.2 million workers. But because the application proved to be challenging and many landlords were not persuaded to apply, in, uh, in late 2020, the federal government transitioned to a new program that allowed small businesses to apply directly without involving their landlord. And the current rent subsidy provides a maximum base rate of 65% for those businesses with a revenue drop of 70% or more. There's also an additional lockdown support, which provides a top up, an additional top up of 25% for those forced to close under any mandatory local public health ordered lockdown. And that adds up to 90% uh, rent subsidy for those under uh, lockdown orders, such as the one Toronto has been, although it's been lifted earlier this week. So to date, more than 134,000 small businesses have been approved for, for the rent subsidy, and more than 54,000 benefited from the 90% lockdown support. Mr. Speaker, this government has also provided liquidity support to businesses and nonprofits to help them with their operating costs. Last year, uh, the federal government launched the Canada Emergency Business Account, known as CEBA. This program provides zero interest, partially forgivable loans to small businesses and other organizations that have experienced diminished revenues due to COVID-19, but face ongoing costs that just can't be avoided or delayed. And by providing assistance in covering costs, CEBA is intended as a bridge until normal operations can resume uh, after COVID-19. Initially, SIBA provided loans of up to $40,000 to small businesses and not-for-profits uh, with loan forgiveness of up to $10,000. And then we expanded the program to make uh, an additional uh, $20,000 of interest-free loan available with up to half of it being forgivable. So this expansion effectively increased uh, SIBA loans to a total of $60,000 for eligible organizations. Uh, and if repaid by the end of 2022, 20,000 becomes a grant. And as of last week, Mr. Speaker, SIBA loans have been dispersed to more than 843,000 Canadian businesses, totaling more than $44 billion. You know, uh, I travel across Davenport as much as possible outside of the lock time periods. And a small business owner, Robin from uh, Three Fates, she told me, SIBA gave me the opportunity to keep my business open for customers, plain and simple. But providing me that influx of cash, cash flow to cover my expenses when things got tough, I've been able to keep things moving for now and keep my store stocked for the neighborhood traffic. 
So, Mr. Speaker, our government has, has helped hundreds of thousands of businesses and their workers through programs like the wage subsidy and the REM subsidy, uh, among many, many other programs that I don't have time to mention. But I always know that there's more that we can do. And I also agree that there's always more we can do to support our small and medium-sized businesses, because the sad reality is that many of these businesses have closed during this uh, this. Um, during COVID-19, and many are still in a precarious position, and they're not quite sure whether they'll actually be able to survive. And I've, I've seen the, these impacts on the main streets in, in, uh, in my riding of Davenport. I believe our federal government must continue to, to do everything we can to prevent bankruptcies and layoffs, and to help Canadian businesses pivot to success as we come out of this pandemic. This motion also talks uh, about uh, supports for the hardest hit sectors, and I'd like to talk a little bit about some of the additional supports that we've already uh, put into place. Um, small uh, and uh, so we know that the, the sectors that have been uh, hardest hit are those in arts and culture, tourism and hospitality. Uh, they've been particularly impacted. And that's why uh, last year, uh, actually more recently, we introduced the highly affected sectors credit availability program, which we called HASCAP. It provides access to guaranteed low interest loans uh, from participating financial institutions of anywhere between 25,000 and a million dollars. And this program is available to businesses that offer operate in those hard hit sectors, tourism, hospitality, hotels, restaurants, arts and entertainment, any, and any of those that rely on in-person services. Another fund, Mr. Speaker, that we've actually created uh, for businesses in these sectors that have been very, uh, very much impacted, but have not been able to access other support is the Regional Relief and Recovery Fund. So we actually had sort of true tranches. The first uh, time we sort of introduced this fund was for was to create a fund for $1.5 billion. Um, and then what we did is we then, uh, in our fall economic statement, we proposed that we actually top this up by $500 million, because we know that there's many that for some reason have been able to apply to some of our other programs and or they've needed some additional supports that they've not been able uh, to to get anywhere else. And Mr. Speaker, I also want to, because it's uh, it's particularly impactful for my writing of Davenport, there's also been some additional support that's been provided to the arts and culture sector. I know that those 500 million that was uh, in emergency supports that was distributed through Canadian Heritage and the Canadian Council for the Arts late last spring. And then more recently, we just announced 181 million for arts, live music and live events, all who've been absolutely devastated by COVID-19. This uh, funding is going to provide support in many areas, including digital innovation. It's going to sort of help with short-term contracts for new projects. It's going to extend many of the existing uh, programs in a safe way. And I will tell you that this fund is particularly helpful uh, for, for many of the, the businesses and groups within my riding of Davenport and right across the city of Toronto. And finally, Mr. Speaker, um, with my time left, I want to also address um, supports for the aviation sector. My riding is home to many pilots and flight attendants uh, and airline uh, employees, many who've worked in the aviation sector for many, many years, and they want to go back to work as soon as they can. And I particularly care uh, that we continue to have Canadian-owned airlines, that we continue to be able to support regional routes. And I know that uh, the, our federal government's working really hard to try to provide support for the industry. And I know that those negotiations and those conversations are underway uh, at the moment. I do think it is important to be able to uh, articulate that there's already been $1.8 billion uh, in support, in wage subsidy support that's been provided to the industry. And that's on top of the uh, additional $1 billion that's been uh, given in support to uh, airports and to smaller airlines. But I know that any package that we're looking at, Mr. Speaker, must also keep uh, Canadian customers uh, whole. Uh, I know that many Canadians had their flights cancelled without a refund, and I think that that needs to be addressed. And I do also think that we need to be providing some support to independent travel agents and operators who've also been devastated by COVID-19. So in conclusion, Mr. Speaker, um, the support programs I've discussed are just some of the programs that the federal government has offered to those hard hit businesses to try to minimize impact to our economy and to set the stage for the creation of more than 1 million jobs. We know that financial challenges will persist for many organizations for at least the next few months. And that's why the uh, programs I've outlined today are so critical. If so, small businesses and, and nonprofits are able to make ends meet with these additional support, I know that they'll better be able to pivot to a strong restart as more Canadians receive their vaccines and as the Canadian economy fully re reopens. 
we, the federal government, will not stop in adapting and responding to the needs of, of Canadian businesses. Our message to them is that we have your back. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Questions and comments? The Honourable Member for Oshawa. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Speaker, and I want to thank my colleague from Davenport for her speech, and I acknowledge that uh, she seems to be aware of the challenges with small businesses. However, I've been listening to the Liberal members, and there seems to be a uh, unrealized um, effect that they don't understand that this is an urgent matter. This is something that in my writing, we have travel agents who worked 24-7 to get people home during the pandemic, but some of them have not had commissions for over a year. And, you know, the day after National Women's Day, what we need to see from this government is certainty. And none of the Liberal members have come forward and said, yes, we're going to be supporting this motion today, but also we will be delivering a budget at a certain date to give the uh, small business community uh, certainty in this country. So I'm asking the member, will she deliver for the tourism sector? And what date can we expect the budget to come out so they have certainty to move forward? We don't want to see any more businesses lost. Member for Davenport. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Mr. Speaker. I, I want to thank the honourable member for his excellent question. And uh, there's a couple of things I want to respond to in there. Uh, the first is I want to just thank all of those internet, those uh, travel operators. Many of them are independent, and the vast majority of them, uh, by the way, are women uh, who worked really hard to bring home uh, uh, Canadians uh, from around the world uh, just after the pandemic lockdown started. So I want to say huge thanks to them. As I mentioned in my speech, I do think that. That part of our support moving forward, our support for the airline moving forward, needs to also uh, um, sort of think about them in terms of ongoing support uh, and appreciate that they've also been disproportionately impacted as well. So I fully support that as well. In terms of whether or not our government's going to be pre presenting a budget, uh, I'm part of the. Uh, I'm very privileged to be part of the finance committee. We've been uh, holding a, a budget uh, consultations. I'm very, very uh, assured that we will be presenting a budget sometime soon. Um, I think it's just a matter of time. So I think it's going to be in the coming. Sure, I've got to uh, try and get two more questions in. Uh, the Honourable Member for Laurenti Labelle. Mr. Speaker, I'll be brief. Earlier, I asked a question to my colleague in terms of wage subsidies, who are for organizations and companies that are struggling. Political parties, except for the Bloc, were eligible for wage subsidies. So my colleague was saying that we are going to reimburse it when the government will do so. Um, here's my question. I'm aware of the concern that you have. Every dollar counts for helping uh, with the economic recovery. But I'm wondering, are you going to reimburse your $850 million in wage subsidies? I'd just like to remind the co colleague to put the questions through the speaker, the honourable member for Davenport. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Mr. Speaker. I think I'm going to sort of I want to sort of finish off in responding to the previous question, then answer this at the same time. I want to assure Canadians who who might be watching that our federal government has urgently uh, introduce programs to support small businesses, workers, and all Canadians throughout this whole pandemic. And I'm very proud of all the actions that we have taken. And I think in terms of just the latest question around the Canadian emergency wage subsidy, as of February 28th, I know that our wage subsidy has helped protect over 5.1 million jobs, totaling over $68 billion in support. And again, we are going to continue to support Canadians, to support our businesses, to support workers as we uh, come out of this pandemic. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, questions and comments? The Honourable Member for Sturgeon River, Parkland. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. In the last year, when we've, we've been undergoing COVID, the government has had it, added enough debt, uh, the equivalent of our entire nation's debt for the past 150 years, including two world wars and a financial crisis. We have not seen anything from the government in terms of a plan to deal with our economic future. How is the government going to deal with rising bond yields? How is the government going to deal with inflation that's above the 2% target? How is the government going to deal with business investment drying up in this country? How are we going to create the economic growth in the future to ensure that we can pay back this debt and we can provide a better future for future generations? 
The Honourable Member for Davenport. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Mr. Speaker, and I want to thank the Honourable Member for his excellent question. I think that's a top-of-mind question for many people. I do want to remind the Honourable Member that uh, we started, uh, at the onset of this pandemic, we started in very good uh, financial uh, uh, situation, and so we were able to sort of put out very uh, aggressively, uh, very generous programs to support our economy, our workers, uh, and our businesses moving forward. If you listen to any of the economists or any of your thought leaders around did we spend too much? Did we take on too much debt? All of them, the vast majority, I can't say all, but the vast majority of them would have said that if we had not spent, that the cost would have been much greater to us. So I have, uh, I know that we have uh, put together, we've put out a fall economic statement. We've given an idea about how it is that we intend to proceed. I think that there's going to be some more finer details and a much cl uh, clearer game plan uh, in the budget that uh, is anticipated to be introduced uh, this spring. Thank you, Mr. Speaker.